at this point, we can't even call this a tank. This is an ultimate tank, a generational tank. I don't even know what word to use or words to use to describe this. This is an outstanding tank job. I can't even believe this. Um, Mets lose 7-3 to, to the Baltimore Orioles. I cannot even envision a world where the Mets win another baseball game this year. I know I said it yesterday, but this was further proof. The top of the lineup produced a good amount in this game. Most going two for four, and then yet Alonso going one for four. Maybe you want better there. But even with the top guys performing, it's still not enough to get more than three runs. It's still not enough to put them in a spot to win this baseball game. This is an unreal tank job. I can't believe it. But hey, at least uh, at least Drew Gilbert drove in Luis Angel Acuna for the Rumble Ponies with a nice little triple there. So... At least we have something to look forward to. But we're going to talk about this game, unfortunately. And I'm a soldier. You might be asking why I'm even doing post games at this rate. Because I'm in it to win it here. I'm in it to win it. Uh, obviously, I know they're not winning anything this year. That's not what I mean by I'm in it to win it. What I mean by I'm in it to win it is I'm in this thing. I am embracing the tank. I am in for this rebuild slash retool, whatever it may be. I am all in on this and I am here to support it because if you're not supporting your team at the lows, then are you really a fan? So I'm going to be here no matter what, somehow and unfortunately. Am I going to cover every game for the remainder of the season? Probably not, especially once hockey rolls around and football. I'm going to be paying more attention to that and I'm not going to care. But for the remainder of the summer, I of course will just, I'll, I'll still cover this team but let's talk about the game Mets go down in order in the top of the first and it is ugly from the bottom of the first because Tyler McGill that guy sucks he has a single to Adley Rushman and then Gunnar Gunnar Henderson helping my fancy baseball team but and helping the Mets tank makes it a two to nothing ball game with a huge home run so uh thank you very much Gunnar Henderson I don't know why I was uh sorry I was looking at something on my phone I thought I missed <clears throat> and I needed the cough. Unprofessional YouTuber here. Anthony Sonson there grounds out. Ryan O'Hearn gets a single. Mountcastle hits into a force out. Westberg strikes out. We go to the top of the second where the Mets go down in order again. All right, cool. Bottom of the second. McGill has a 1-2-3 inning. I didn't think it was possible. What do the Mets do in the top of the third, everybody? They go down 1-2-3. Uh, in the bottom of the third, Rushman grounds out. Henderson grounds out. And then why would it be an easy inning as Anthony Santander gets himself a double and then Ryan O'Hearn gets a single and that makes it a three to nothing ball game. Mount Castle grounds out and then we end up going to the fourth inning where the Mets don't gallop down one, two, three for the first time in what feels like decades as Brayden Nemo gets a leadoff double. Francisco Lindor grounds out. And then Jeff McNeil gets a home run. Did you think it was possible? His fourth of the year. And that makes it a 3-2 to two ball game. And then Alonzo and Vogel back ground out. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Westberg gets a double. Kowser strikes out. Urias gets a double to make it 4-2. to two. So, yeah, you thought the Mets may be crawling back in it. Nope. McKenna flies out. Rutschman flies out. We go to the top of the fifth. And what do the Mets do? Go down 1-2-3. Bottom of the fifth, Gunnar Henderson strikes out. Anthony Santander hits a home run to make it 5-2. to two. And then O'Hearn flies out. Mountcastle with a single. Hartwig comes in the pitch. He gets Westberg the line out. We go to the sixth inning. Uh, two outs from Stewart and Nimmo back-to-back. -back, and then Lindor gets a double. Jeff McNeil, nice little RBI yet again. Gets a single, makes it 5-3. to three. So nice little day for Jeff McNeil at the very least, right? If he could heat up, that would be huge. Uh, obviously, I want them to tank and I want them to lose. But at the same time, it would be nice if Jeff McNeil could heat up because I want to see what we have here in Jeff McNeil. And I, I get that some people might want him to suck so the Mets get rid of him, but I, I don't know. I mean, if they're going to trade him, at least if he heats up here, he's boosting his value. So that would be nice. Alonzo lines out. We go to the bottom of the six. Kowser walks. Uriah strikes out. McKenna gets a double. Six of three ball game. Rutschman flies out. Gunnar Henderson flies out. We go to the top of the seventh where the Mets almost got, go down in order. Beatty had a walk, but everyone else grounds out in the inning. Bottom of the seventh, Santander pops out. O'Hearn flies out. Mountcastle with a walk. And then 
Westberg ends up hitting into a line out. We go into the eighth inning where there was a couple of changes as the Orioles go to the bullpen. D, uh, or Danny Mendick comes up the pitch hit. Why? I don't know. Probably to get a righty up there, I guess. But uh, he ends up popping out. Brandon Nimmo gets a single and Dorr gets a single. And then McNeil flies out to end the inning. So, again, the Mets don't capitalize at all on, uh, on a runner in scoring position. Phil Bickford comes in. He might be the worst pitcher to ever pitch for uh, the Mets, or at least relief pitcher, because is he going to give a good outing at all? He had three strikeouts, which isn't bad, but allows a single, strikes out Urias. Kowser stole a base, by the way, but McKenna strikes out. Rushman gets a double to make it 7-3. to three. Henderson walks and Santander strikes out. I guess it was a less bad inning, but still not good enough. And then we go to the ninth inning. Alonzo gets a leadoff double, and then uh, Vogel back lines out. Marte strikes out. Beatty strikes out. That's your ball game because the Mets do not win baseball games anymore. That's just not in their DNA. And uh, they lose 7-3. to three. 12 hits for the Orioles, 7 for the Mets. I'd imagine your losing pitcher is Tyler McGillan. I'd imagine your winning pitcher is, yeah, it is uh, Kyle Gibson helping out the fantasy team as well. So at least we get some contributions to the fantasy team. But... Wow, this is something else, this uh, this team. McGill allows five runs in four and two-thirds of an innings pitch, nine hits, three strikeouts, two home runs. I really am disappointed because I was excited for Tyler McGill, and I thought there was something there with him at first, and I thought I never imagined him being a future ace or being a number three starter. I imagined a back end of the rotation guy where he would be like – sitting in the three and a half to four ERA range. And I know ERA is not the end all be all, but I can't imagine like his FIP and everything is good. So I have no hope at all for Tyler Miguel. I mean, there's literally no hope. He's probably going to end up being the Mets leader in innings pitch this year somehow. And yeah, he has an expected year at 6.08. His FIP is better than his ERA, but a 5.09, a 5.19 expected FIP. 0.1 war. I don't know how his war is in the positives, but there's nothing anymore to be excited about with Tyler McGill. He's over-reliant on this fastball, and because I did a deep dive for whatever reason into Tyler McGill to see if maybe there's something there, and I, I just don't see it. I just don't anymore, and his four seam or uh, was it a two seam? I don't know. His fastball though, regardless, it's just, it, it's just not good enough. And it, it is the amount, like the difference in numbers for hitters against that fastball versus his other pitches is outstanding. I mean, he, the numbers against, let's see if I could quickly find it on baseball savant here but yeah i mean this year everyone's heading his pitches but like if you look at last year he really he over relied on his fastball and used it a lot but this year he's really over relying on it first of all second of all his four seam which is what it is there was a 298 batting average against it, a 426 slugging. All the other pitches were fine, although his changeup was not good either. But, I mean, his slider uh, hitters were – it was unhittable basically last year. Hitters are getting to it this year for whatever reason, but I, I, I just don't know. I don't see it with Tyler McGill anymore, and it's just ugly. It's just an ugly situation, and I'm disappointed. Hartwig – I want him to succeed because this is a guy that could potentially be part of the Mets going down the road and develop as a bullpen piece. He's only 25 years old. I'm not giving up on him, and I, I think there's still something there, but we'll we'll have to see. Phil Bickford, he just straight up sucks. Uh, there's no way around it, and I wouldn't lose sleep if the Mets DFA'd him as soon as tomorrow. Like I really wouldn't care if they gave up on him, but at least he's helping with the tank, so they probably won't. Top of the lineup did good. The top three, all of them went two for four. Nimmo struck out twice. Lindor once. 
McNeil didn't at all. He had three RBIs. Also, very good day uh, at the office for the top three in the order. Even Alonso going one for four is okay, and he struck out. But then we get to the rest of the lineup, and this is where I have a gripe with Buck Showalter because I – it's stupid. It's going to sound so stupid that I'm annoyed by this because it's like, oh, who cares? The season's over, and who cares because Alvarez went 0 for 3 anyway. Why is Alvarez hitting eighth in the order on this team? He should easily be hitting above Marte. He should easily be hitting above Vogelback. He should easily be hitting above Beatty. I don't see a reason why Brett Beatty especially is hitting above Alvarez. If you're going to, like, why is Alvarez hitting eighth in the lineup? I know, again, he went 0 for 3, and it's a stupid complaint here from me. But don't you want to give him more ABs and give him more of a chance to produce and let him get opportunities that's just what i would figure but what do i know i guess but i just don't see a reason why it would make sense to hit francisco alvarez eighth i know tonight buck kind of went for a lefty righty lefty righty lefty righty type deal why didn't alvarez hit six and Marte hit eighth like what does Marte provide for one the future of this team to even the season and in general what has Marte done this year to deserve to be hitting six in this batting order and he went oh for four two strikeouts he was worse than alvarez i know alvarez got went over three but like at least he was making contact i guess but i don't know it's a dumb complaint but brett Beatty scaring me oh for three he walked today at least but three strikeouts there's i'm getting scared i'm getting very scared and i don't know what to, what they do with him i really don't and then Marte 0 for 4, two strikeouts. Vogelback 0 for 1. Stewart 0 for 2 with a strikeout. This team just, it's just bad. And it's a tank like I've never seen. It truly is. But that's going to be it for me. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next one.